and welcome to How to Slap Yourself. Step one, clone yourself. Step two, slap yourself. It's as easy as that. So here we are in Premiere Pro again. Uh, the concept behind this video is actually very similar to the last video that I posted. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link at the end of this video and in the description below. So the idea is um, using masking again. So there's two versions of myself, just like in the last video as well. So this shot in particular was filmed on a tripod this time. So it's very important to have a completely fixed shot for this whole video. So if you uh, decide to leave the room, make sure you don't knock the camera if you're halfway through filming because the whole thing will be ruined. So you've got a fixed angle and it starts off with one version of myself. Obviously there's no other version of me in the shot at the moment because I'm not a twin. So I had to do a load of different versions of this first sort of scene, which was me slapping the air basically. Hello and welcome to How to Slap Yourself. Step one, clone yourself. Step two, slap yourself. So I had to use my imagination again, imagining that there was another version of myself. So I'm roughly, <laughs> roughly, I'm actually the same height as myself, funnily enough. So I aimed to slap exactly where my eye level was, imagining that there was another version of myself. So once I was happy with this first bit, I just moved over to the other side of the shot and pretended to be slapped, basically. So this one was quite crucial to do loads of different takes. Otherwise, there might not be one that actually matched up with the slap itself. So I moved a little bit closer, a little bit further away. I sort of stood a bit more upright just to make sure my head was in the right position for the slap. So there's a load of different ones. So I basically did that until I was happy that I'd got every single combination. So this is where I took out the take for the first bit of the video and this here is where I chopped out the, the clone of myself, the version that gets slapped. So really what I just did was layered them on top of each other. So I've got the original take, which is the right hand side one, as you can see here. And then as I snap my fingers, I bring in the clone. So as you can see there's actually quite a complex masking situation going on here with quite a few keyframes. So mainly the mask path is being keyframed. As you can see the mask is constantly moving. So the key point here is when the hand goes up and slaps. So as the hand comes across I've had to cut in with the mask here because obviously if the mask remained here, then my hand would just disappear. So I've had to lead the mask towards my face to then allow for the slap. And luckily I brought my hand straight back towards me. So I didn't need to do too much after that. So after the slap, I lift my knee up, had to do a bit of an adjustment there. If I turn the mask feathering down, you can see quite clearly that there were two different lighting situations going on here and here. And what that was caused by is the fact that I was stood here and there was a key light to my right, sort of over here. Um, so as that was shining on me, obviously, it cast, cast a shadow across the wall here. But then if you add a bit of a feather, it makes it a lot less obvious. So this is why I've had to begin as the clone appears I've had to actually have the mask coming up this side here as you can see so what I actually attempted to do is made the mask into a certain shape that kind of represented my body as if it's casting a shadow on the wall which actually worked quite well in sort of hiding the fact that there were two different lighting situations going on over here so if you look, as I move across, 
that little shadow there is actually the mask doing that but it ended up looking quite convincing as if it was a, a shadow so you wouldn't be able to tell so that's kind of it really for the masking situation what I did do when I'd finished filming everything I went back to the middle of the room and proceeded to slap myself in the face to get an audio clip for the slap so just to make it <laughs> just to make it as realistic sounding as possible um, this green audio underneath is actually a microphone that I set up just here so I thought the mic because I was quite far away from the camera I thought it'd be it would sound better to use a microphone down here so I've actually synced those two up so that's the audio from the camera and this is the audio from that microphone on the table so the audio that you can see under here is actually all the audio from this mic instead of the camera mic so for finishing touches with this one uh, I actually wanted to make it so the camera didn't look like it was sat on a tripod so what I've actually got is a preset here called handheld camera motion and I actually made this myself using After Effects. Um, I actually held the camera and filmed an object, something that was trackable, and then basically took the tracking data and imported it into Premiere and saved it as a preset. So now I can add handheld camera movement to any sort of fixed video if I want to. I definitely didn't invent it or come up with the idea, but I saw a video and decided to try it myself and it worked out quite well. So unfortunately you can't actually just drag it onto the adjustment layer which would be very handy. Uh, so instead you have to either individually drag it onto each of these clips. But you'll see the problem here. So once you've dragged it on, because the actual motion is changing, you then have to increase the scale only by a little bit just to uh, make sure you don't get these black areas around the edge of the screen so step two slap yourself obviously you can see very clearly that there's two different kind of effects going on so in order to add this preset to both of these all you have to do is select all the clips right click nest just call this slap sequence nest and once you open this up, you can see this is the uh, sequence of video. And then all you have to do is drag that motion onto the nested sequence and then add your scaling back up to 105. So I just added five to it just to close those little gaps. So now, as you can see, there's a very subtle camera movement just to make it look a little bit more real. Step two, slap yourself. So this little bit of audio here is the slap sample that I recorded. And this is the audio that's come from the mic rather than the camera, just like the rest of the audio. And on its own, it sounds like this. So a very convincing slap sound. Well, it should be because I actually slapped myself in the face. So as realistic as it can get really. Um, so that's kind of it for this one. I'll just play the sequence one more time and uh, enjoy. Hello and welcome to How to Slap Yourself. Step one, clone yourself. Step two, slap yourself. It's as easy as that. So thanks for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give it a like. And if you have any other suggestions for videos or any kind of tutorials or anything like that, then leave a comment down below with suggestions. Um, I'd appreciate it if you did subscribe and hit the notification bell as well, so you'll be notified of any upcoming videos. And I'll see you in the next one.